So recently I tested out the fastest gaming monitor that you can buy today, the 390Hz Acer Nitro. And I'd say that right now that is my top recommendation if you're after the most competitive display for esports titles. And this is basically that monitor but 27 inch 1440p. So if you really like the idea of that 390Hz Acer Nitro and kind of what you're getting in that package, this is basically that but just you know in a larger form factor with more pixels. Sure it's not 390Hz but 270 hertz man i mean that is incredibly quick for 1440p and i'm going to be completely honest the speed difference between this and the 1080p 390 hertz are in games like valorant and csgo primarily where you know you're driving 300 fps plus even at 1440p the speed difference between those two monitors really isn't that different so if you're someone who really likes the idea of having an ultra fast really competitive display but at the same time you don't want to compromise with only a 1080p panel well this is what i'd recommend instead now, of course, a big question that a lot of you will have is, can you even take advantage of that 270Hz refresh rate in today's games? I mean, even with an RTX 3080 or higher, is 270fps even possible at 1440p? Well, it goes without saying that you'd be mostly interested in this monitor for competitive titles, most likely first-person shooters, games like Valorant, CSGO, Apex Legends, and yeah, for those games, you can take advantage of 270Hz even at 1440p. Valorant and CSGO Go are two games which will play consistently above 270 FPS if you have a beefy system, for example something like an RTX 3080 and a modern CPU with around 6 cores or more, and honestly the experience in those games in terms of speed is not too different from the 390Hz Acer which I recently reviewed. As for the more demanding competitive games like Apex and Warzone, yeah 1440p can get a bit rough at times, and I do feel slightly more competitive on the 1080p 390Hz for those games. So bottom line then if those are the games that you like to play as well an enthusiast gpu like a 3080 is highly highly recommended if you want to get even close to maximizing 270 hertz okay then well what about input lag since you'll be gaming at a higher resolution and the time it takes to render each frame will be slightly longer naturally expect about a millisecond or two of additional delay versus 1080p but again that's mostly due to the increased time that it takes to render a frame at 1440p versus 1080p not due to the monitor itself. When we normalize the render time though and test that here with Nvidia's LDAT, then the 270Hz Acer actually performs really good, essentially as fast when it comes to input delay as those higher refresh 1080p displays. The Acer Predator does also have a low latency mode in the menu, but that doesn't really seem to do much here, especially since we're measuring the entire chain from mouse click to a flash on the display. Probably the most important aspect of a competitive gaming monitor though are the response times and motion clarity where we want the least motion blur on the display as possible. The 270Hz Acer has three response time modes, off, normal, and extreme. All of the modes here look fine, honestly, but the best mode to use would be normal, slightly less ghosting than off, and no inverse ghosting or color shift that we see here with the extreme mode. Thankfully though, we do have a pretty solid implementation here of backlight strobing, and yes, it runs at the full 270Hz, which is awesome. There are two strobing modes, normal, normal and extreme, with the extreme mode offering the best detail and clarity of the moving UFO, but at the cost of double imaging being a lot more apparent. Since the strobe pulse width is extremely short here on this extreme mode, it just ends up being too dark to be usable anyway. Normal though, that is something that I can recommend using. Compared to having it off, both are honestly really great, both have their pros and cons, so it's really up to the user at the end of the day. Personally, I do think having it set to normal looks the best. So then, when we compare the non-strobing mode to other really fast 1440p displays that I've tested, like the ASUS PG279QM and the LG 27GP850, the results are really close between them. The ASUS does have the best result in the end, in my opinion though, with almost no ghosting on the trailing edge, which is really impressive. When we substitute in the strobing mode on the Acer and the LG though, which the ASUS does not have, I would say the Acer does take the lead overall. Versus the LG, there's no color shift, there's better detail in the middle, and it also runs 90 hertz faster. It's also $200 more expensive though, but we'll come back to that in the end. Now I mentioned that the extreme strobing mode here was too dim to be usable, and yeah, topping out at just 123 nits, that's not bright enough even to use in a reasonably dark room. The normal setting though, which in my opinion just looks better anyway, is totally usable, topping out here at around 250 nits. Otherwise, with strobing off, the Acer Predator gets seriously bright 
light at around 450 nits. So if your gaming room has floodlights installed or if you want to burn out your retinas, then feel free. I will mention that the brightness adjustment in the strobing modes is really weird, just like the 390Hz which we recently reviewed. You basically have to set a value for the brightness first, then turn the strobing on, and then toggle the max brightness setting. Now in terms of color performance, out of the box, the 270Hz Acer Predator is set to its general mode, which uses a wide color gamut, and I'm not kidding when I say it'll be one of the most vibrant and saturated images that you've ever seen. I think Acer have done this because most people will be buying this for competitive titles, and generally those users want a vibrant experience. It makes picking out those enemies in those types of games a lot easier. In this mode, you're getting over 92% of DCI-P3 coverage, which shows the huge amount of colors that this display can produce. And personally, for the types of games that I play and what this monitor is best suited for, that's something that I'm a big fan of. That also means though that regular desktop use will look very oversaturated in this mode, if not calibrated with a colorimeter, which most of you probably don't have. So just keep that in mind. Luckily though, if you do want a color accurate experience when it comes to viewing sRGB content online, you can switch over to the sRGB mode in the picture settings. No need for calibration or anything like that here as the result is pretty much spot on out of the box with superbly low delta E values. As for the design and exterior, there's not a whole lot here that you haven't seen before. The metal stand is pretty chunky and has plenty of adjustability and the vase mounting is really simple if you want to use this with a monitor arm instead. Now in the end though, it always comes down to the price and that's where I think the Acer Predator 270Hz is actually quite good at around 700 US dollars. Now don't get me wrong, that's expensive for a gaming monitor, but for 1440p with flagship specs, that's actually not too bad considering the other monitors around that price point. For example, versus the $500 390Hz Acer Nitro, I would recommend this 1440p model instead if you have a beefy GPU to go along with it, and if you do other things with your display that can benefit from that higher resolution. For example, content creation or viewing, day-to-day -day work with spreadsheets or documents, or just single player games that you really enjoy. All of that stuff is way better at 1440p and in my opinion is worth that price difference. And then versus the LG 27 GP850, I still think that's a really rock solid option at $500. I mean, even if you do play a lot of first person shooters, 180 hertz is still very fast for those games. In my opinion though, the pricing is pretty fair here between the LG and the Acer. I do feel with the 270 hertz Acer Predator, you are getting $200 more gaming monitor. So it really just depends on your own budget and how sweaty of a gamer you really are. Now there is actually another 1440p 270Hz option out there, believe it or not, from ASUS. It's called the XG27 AQM. That monitor is not available for purchase here in Australia yet, otherwise I would have reviewed it at the same time as this one here. But for now, I really can't tell you which one is the better 270Hz option. And honestly, when it comes to price, they are identical at $200. So the decision is pretty tough. What I can say though, is that versus the ASUS PG279QM, which is the 1440p 240Hz ASUS model that I recently reviewed and called the best 1440p monitor that you could buy, this one is slightly better. I mean, it's 30 hertz faster, which is nice. And then you have the motion blur reduction, which is nice if you want that clear emotion. But best of all, this faster Acer is actually $200 cheaper, which is insane. And I think that's mostly due to not having a physical G-Sync module or a physical reflex module in the Acer, which the Asus does have. And honestly, most consumers don't really care about that stuff. The Acer Predator though is still a G-Sync and FreeSync compatible display. So there's nothing really to worry about there. So yeah, overall, super quick, super premium display. If you're after just the fastest 1440p experience that you can buy, uh, this is it, the Acer Predator 270 Hertz. Now, of course, the Asus is an option as well. I do want to review that one eventually, but can't really recommend that one until I've tested it. This one though, rock solid option. So if you're interested in it, I will leave it linked down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.